It was the highest stakes underground poker game in the States. Celebrities flocked to the tables to try their luck and win big. Celebrities like Leonardo DiCaprio, Todd Phillips, and Tobey Maguire. But here's the thing about luck. Sometimes it runs out, and in one night, one player lost $100 million. Oh, and did we mention that these secret games were illegal? Well, they were. And the host, Molly Bloom, found that her luck had run out too. This is the story of the underground poker games played by celebrities for years, and the mind-boggling amount of money that was lost. So, who was the mastermind behind these games? Who was calling the shots, setting up the tables, loaning the money to the players? That would be none other than Molly Bloom. Never heard of her? Well, let's catch you up real quick. Molly Bloom came from a family that put quite a bit of pressure on her to be the best, no matter what it was. If it wasn't world class, it wasn't good enough for her family. One of her brothers is an Olympian, and the other is a world class surgeon at Harvard University. Talk about pressure. To quote Molly, Literally, if you weren't the best in the world in my family, it wasn't impressive. I was looking for this thing that was going to make me feel fulfilled inside. So Molly tried her hand at professional skiing, but after 10 years of it, she decided she was tired of always being cold. So she moved to Hollywood, and her parents, not thrilled about this life change, cut her off. After working as a bartender and a server, she found herself working as an assistant to a real estate investor. And part of her job description was setting up celebrity poker tournaments. Her journey towards running the most sought after and highest stakes poker games in the States had begun. At first, she simply observed the games, but soon after, Bloom started running her own poker tournaments, but made sure to do them right. She rented out suites at the Beverly Hills Hotel, where a one-night stay costs $715. The Peninsula, where deluxe suites can cost up to $4,450 per night, and the Four Seasons, where suites can cost up to $1,000. Her games were extravagant. She served the best food and hired the most beautiful women to offer personal massages for her guests. And it wasn't uncommon for a game to last three days. But here's where things get interesting. Celebrities loved these underground games. Some of the hottest stars in Hollywood would try their luck. A-listers like Leonardo DiCaprio, Ben Affleck, and Tobey Maguire loved to frequent the tables. But it wasn't uncommon to see Macaulay Culkin and Todd Phillips playing rounds of poker with the elite of the elite. Word got around of these games where fortunes were won and lost with each hand. And soon, politicians, Wall Street investors, businessmen, and even Russian mobsters all found a seat around Molly Bloom's table. Oh, and when we say fortunes were won and lost in an instant, we absolutely mean it. On The Ellen DeGeneres Show, Molly opened up about the extreme buy-ins to play her game. When her ring first started out, just to get in the door, you had to pay $10,000, but that buy-in fee kept rising all the way up to $250,000 just to even step foot in the room. And get this, according to Bloom, she saw one player, who she never revealed the name of, lose $100 million in a single night. Talk about a bad hand. But good luck was just as prevalent. In fact, Bloom once opened up about what the vibe was like with her guests after the game, and she was quoted as saying, conversations with her guests went a little something like this. Thanks for allowing me to win $5 million with the money you vouched for. Which brings us to the part of our story where things don't go so well for Molly's game. See, Molly had been extending credit to the players. And in LA, this is perfectly legal. And in fact, Bloom would collect a hefty tip off some of the largest hands that were played. And in one year, she reportedly made $4 million. It was completely legitimate though, and she even paid her taxes on it. But as the credits she extended got bigger and bigger and bigger, Molly found her luck was about to run out. In one instance, she wasn't paid her proper percentage from one of her poker players. It was a sum of $250,000. Molly was furious, and after that, started taking a percentage of the pot, which is illegal. Very, very illegal. In 2011, the FBI raided one of her games and seized all of her money. 
She was now flat broke, and the IRS was looking to collect taxes on the additional money she had earned. Molly Bloom and her celebrity underground poker games, where millions upon millions were won and lost each hand, were no more. Or so it seemed. Turns out, Molly Bloom isn't one to accept defeat so easily. Maybe this comes from her family's winner's mindset, or maybe it's her innate creativity and drive. But whatever it is, Molly Bloom has turned her life around in a very lucrative way. Bloom decided to write a book about her experience. She had gone to rehab and was looking for a way to put closure to this chapter of her life and hopefully even pay off her debts in the process. Her first draft was completed in 2013, and the publishing house Harper Collins paid her $45,000 for the book. But then, seemingly out of nowhere, 17 FBI agents showed up on her doorstep in 2013 and arrested her. The case was the United States of America versus Molly Bloom. And in 2014, a federal judge miraculously ruled that she had been a minor player in her illegal gambling ring, and she received one year probation, a $1,000 fine, and 200 hours of community service we'd say she got off easy. Bloom saw this as more content for her book, and she published it a month after her hearing, and quickly started pitching it as a movie. Something in her told her if she could get her story in front of Aaron Sorkin, the man responsible for movies like Steve Jobs, The Social Network, A Few Good Men, and Moneyball, and who has a net worth of $90 million, she could convince him this was the story he needed to tell. Bloom finally did get to meet Sorkin, due to her finding a lawyer who had connections to the screenwriter. And believe it or not, they hit it off. Sorkin stated, I'd said I'd meet with her as a courtesy to him. The book is a great ride, but I really wasn't thinking this was in my wheelhouse. But when I met Molly, everything changed. I'd been very stupid. I'd made assumptions about Molly that were totally unfounded. Sorkin's bet paid off. Molly's Game starred Jessica Chastain, was nominated for Best Screenplay, and made $59.3 million at the box office on a $30 million budget. Bloom was back on top. These days, she's long left the world of illegal gambling rinks. Now she lives in Colorado and has taken up meditation, and her next step in life is overseeing her new company called Full Bloom, which will specialize in providing co-working, membership-only spaces for women. If you're going to gamble, you'd better be prepared to lose. And that was exactly what happened to not only the countless celebs that took a seat at Molly Bloom's table, but Molly Bloom herself. Well, at least at first. We have to say we commend her ingenuity, her drive, and her ability to face adverse times with a clear head. It certainly paid off. After all, being buds with Aaron Sorkin and having a movie made about your life starring Jessica Chastain is certainly not how the story ends for most criminals. There's something we all could learn from her. And who knows? Maybe after applying her mindset, even you could become one of the richest. Or at least, maybe you could be running poker games for them.